So it's National Bourbon Heritage Month. What kind of bourbon should you have first? Welcome to Kilco. My name is Brian, and it is time for some whiskey. Um, this is one that I have some history with, and many of you probably recognize because it's behind almost every bar in this country. And I wanted to try it since uh, this month is going to be all about bourbon, apparently. Uh, this is something I haven't had since I was probably 20-something, and we're talking about doing shots of it. And I don't think I've had it since unless it was in a mixed drink, so I am looking forward to getting to try this once again. This is a Kentucky Straight Bourbon Whiskey, 40% alcohol by volume, and apparently they've been around for 225 years of family. That's always encouraging. 40% uh, is the only thing that's really making me go, eh. Uh, that and the fact that I have some history with this one. And there's not any real bad memories, but there's, you know, it's like college years. There's nothing horrible, but mm, I overdid it. The only sad thing is, no cork. She sad in my soul. There we go. Not too much, not too little. I may be having more drinks later on. That'll be nice. I'm expecting exactly what you'd think with bourbon. Um, but, again, you want to start off with nose. Oh. It honestly doesn't smell like I remember it at all. It smells sweet as heck. I'll say honey. Although I have a feeling I accidentally saw that earlier. I'll be honest. Honey and brown sugar is one I often get. And again, I have a very hard time doing this, but I enjoy it, so I keep trying. As far as other notes, I'm not getting anything all, all of a sudden. I had it was a real weird smell, which I didn't recognize. Kind of ethanol-ish, but not too severe. It seemed very sweet. It's calming now. I might be getting some wood notes. The funny thing is, the memory I have of Jim Beam is not this. Uh, I have a very different type of memory of drinking this. So this is extremely bizarre, but then again, when I was drinking it before, it was just to knock it back and it hurt like hell. Well, I don't dislike it, but other than it smelling sweet, maybe corn? I don't even know if this is made of corn. That's one of the things I should remember to check next time. Mm -hmm. Alright, I've nosed as best I can. Uh, it doesn't smell bad to me, but um, I feel like there are notes I'm missing for whatever reason. Now to the taste. It's kind of thin, which is what I expected from your standard bourbon that is sold everywhere. But it doesn't taste bad. And I'm expecting that burning feeling, but I'm not getting it. Like usually I get a burn. But again, that might be just a higher proof, which is something I like, or at least feels nice to me. It's like, oh, yes. <laughs> That's the stuff. That's probably a bad thing, but oh well. It's very light. It's sticking. So the aftertaste is not too bad. Or the, uh, it's clinging a little, which is a good thing for me. Um, when it when I drink something, it seems like I'm drinking water. I get a little concerned. This is a little thin, but it's still sticking around. As far as the taste, I'm not getting much, honestly. Usually, there's a tinge of sweetness and maybe a little bit of that oakishness, <laughs> but probably because it's a slower proof, and probably because I'm used to drinking higher proofs, I'm not getting a heck of a lot out of it. And again, I have to keep in mind that I have uh, mental problems that keep me from experiencing things as I would like to, mood disorders, uh, 
And the big thing about drinking whiskey is often the mood. And uh, mine is always kind of weird. So it makes it a little difficult, but keep trying anyway, because it gives me an excuse to keep drinking lots of whiskey. Not that I need an excuse, to be honest. It's kind of there and gone. It's not bad, though. But... Yeah, it's kind of sweet, a little bit oaky, a little bit of tanninishness, no real pepperiness, no burn. So this is a good introduction uh, bourbon, I would say. Um, I think they'd be happy about that. Jim Beam is probably very well aware that it's an introductory bourbon. And I have to admit, it's probably my um, abuse, let's say. Of having so many higher proof whiskeys over the past three to four years and realizing I like those more. Anything 40% always makes me go, okay, I'm probably good, but it's not exactly what I like. This is a problem. But I do have a whole bottle of it. It doesn't taste bad. What I might do is uh, make a bigger pour and sip on this for a while, see what happens. Yeah, this one's missing. I'm, I'm having a hard time with this one, as the taste goes. Granted, I did eat some uh, barbecue and stuff earlier, but that was uh, like hours ago. Or at least over an hour ago. But as always, I do this wrong. Now, now I'll get closer to the camera, and uh, we will look at the app, which I have linked below if you'd like to look at it as well. And that will give me some better idea of what I'm experiencing. Although I have a feeling it's not going to be extremely um, complicated. A community nose profile. Vanilla, sweet, caramel, corn, and oak. So there was no honey. I swore I saw honey when I tried to pull this up. I felt very bad that I thought honey, and it might have been here, and I might have seen it. But no honey, but the usual, uh, you know, vanilla, sweet, caramel. Corn I didn't expect to see. I didn't expect to see corn. I think I said corn. But I'm not sure now. And, of course, oak for the community flavor profile. Vanilla, spicy, oak, corn, sweet, and caramel. Again, we're talking basic bourbon here, folks. Um, it's, it's been said in the Whiskey Vault channel, which I will link up there, uh, that bourbon has what they call a narrower spectrum. So it's like this for flavors and smells usually, um, although they've been doing a lot of interesting stuff with finishing, so maybe that's changing, but they say scotch is a little more broader, and I would agree, because I get a lot of extremely random things from scotch, and um, just the fact that they peat their whiskey is, is something that dramatically changes it. They don't always peat it, but it's it's a option. Um, with this, however, as I've said in many of my videos, honestly, it, there's always a you know sweetness, a little bit of wood, and uh, that's the most of it for me sometimes. But with this one, we got vanilla, spicy oak, corn, sweet caramel on the taste. Those are all basic bourbon notes. I'm not really getting spicy. When I think spicy, I think something that really makes my, my tongue go nuts, but I am not getting that. And the finished profile, community profile. Oak, vanilla, corn, caramel, spicy, and pepper. No, not at all for me. It's clingy at the end, but not, not too bad. Very mild as a bourbon to me. Keep that in mind. I'm used to many different kinds of bourbons. Uh, the official overview. This is always interesting to see something official in here. Uh, I did say the alcohol percentage. The ABV is 40%. I didn't say the age, which apparently is four, which I think is what the word straight is about. I'm never, never certain on that one. It's bottled and bond and straight. Those two, I always feel like I mess up. Uh, my origin, Kentucky. Good. Type Kentucky Straight Bourbon. Good. The Jim Beam house style is characterized by high proportions of rye and corn in the mash bill. Oh, okay, good. With the remainder made up of malted barley, appreciated for its pleasant, sweet, sour, and mellow, nutty character, Jim Beam White Label has become one of the best-selling bourbons in the world. That is true.
I believe it's called Beam of Some Tori now. It's a major corporation. They kind of tag team with some uh, Japanese distillers, I believe, which is awesome. The color. I forgot to go over the color. It's actually really light. Comparatively. I'm not sure how well this ever shows up on the camera, but for most bourbons, they're a little darker. And this was four years. This almost looks like an Irish to me. Almost. Usually that's a little more yellow. This is a little more orange. Orangey amberish. Official nose. The nose is quite sweet with gentle notes of vanilla and cut hay, a touch of fresh corn fields, and a little cereal sweetness, like the bluegrass fields of Kentucky. Definitely written by someone who's official. It's funny. It's funny the kind of stuff they come up with, and I love it. Uh, the palate is of a good body with notes of toasty oak and all the requisite notes of vanilla and creme on glass. Wow, that's a word I didn't expect to run into. A little spice and pepper with an acetone note. Acetone, huh? Maybe that's what I was getting at the beginning. Now, this is saying what um, the taste is, but... And the official finish. The finish uh, is of a toasty oak and resin with some sweetness. Resin. Never heard that one before. I will not disagree with any of those, but um, I don't even know if I said that word right. Creme anglaise? A-N-G-L-A-I-S-E. I don't know what that is. I'll have to look that up someday. All in all, a pleasant way to start this month. I'm looking forward to doing as many bourbon reviews as I can this month, but I will not promise anything because my mental health is not something I have any control over, unfortunately. Um, especially with the year being 2020 and the news being what it is. It's like constant, horrible news, and it is devastating at times. I mean, most people right now are just trucking along, and I'm, I'm on that boat with everyone else. Although, there's something I heard about people saying we're all in the same boat. We are not all in the same boat. We're in the same storm, but many people's boats, so to speak, are very different. I am in a position of being very fortunate as to what I have and where I am right now, and uh, I'm lucky about that. A lot of people aren't. A lot of people lost their jobs. A lot of people won't be able to pay for rent. Oh, there's my mind's already going to the dark places. Anyway, uh, till next time. Live long and prosper. Don't forget to be awesome. And uh, to take a note from this channel, which I will link up here, drink more bourbon.